This morning on CBS 2 News, the president considering another move for abortion rights as protests over the issue continue across the country. Plus, a pastor from Ukraine asking for help from Idahoans. His mission to help cities under attack. Plus, concerns of a recession. They're rising. Why experts expect better than job numbers may not be good news. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look of downtown Boise on this Monday, July 11th, 2022. Yeah, I can't believe it's already July 11th. That also means it's free Slurpee Day. And with these temperatures we're expected to see for the kicking off the work week, you might need a Slurpee, some way to cool down. Good morning, Marcos. Good morning, Sarah. That's right. We're going to be warming up this week. We are expected to see some triple digits this week, but for today, highs are going to be in the mid 90s. But I'm going to uh, start out by taking a look at this live shot right now downtown. A nice mild start to your Monday morning. South winds at three miles an hour. Feels like 40. Uh, feels like 59 degrees out there. And taking a look at some of these temperatures across the valley this morning. 63 Mountain Home, McCall, uh, 69 Ontario, McCall there at 57, and Nampa there at 64 degrees. Taking a look at that coffee forecast for this morning. As I said, we are going to be getting into the mid 90s for this afternoon. Uh, nice, hot, dry conditions. Looking at our almanac real quick. Normal time, normal temperatures for this time, 92. We're going to be out two to three degrees warmer. These are some of our high temperatures for today. 93 Boise, um, 93 Mountain Home, Caldwell there, 94, and Nampa there, 93 degrees. Looking at our, our temperature trends across uh, the country right now, above normal conditions are going to be favored for our area over the next couple days. So here's what we could expect. Warmer today, triple digits midweek, a chance of storms on Tuesday, Wednesday, but mainly dry and hot conditions. Sarah? Yeah, thank you, Marcos. It is 501 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. You see those headlights out there rolling along smoothly. Not much to note this morning as far as your morning commute. So it's looking good out there. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we begin this morning in Washington, where President Biden says he's considering declaring a public health emergency to free up federal resources to promote abortion access. It's a hot button issue. Now, this move includes a public health emergency declaration to free up federal resources. My ultimate goal is to reinstate Roe v. Wade as a national law by passing it in the United States Congress, and I'll sign it the moment that happens. Last Friday, President Biden signed an executive order aimed at protecting abortion rights. The order offers new guidelines for protecting patient privacy and efforts to expand access to medical abortion. It also directs agencies to take steps to ensure emergency medical care for pregnant women and those experiencing pregnancy loss. Now, this after last month's Supreme Court ruling to reverse Roe v. Wade, protesters across the nation are continuing to rally as more states move to either ban or restrict abortion. More than a month after the January 6th committee began its public hearings, two more are scheduled for this week. Now, the first is set for tomorrow, then another set for Thursday. Committee member Jamie Raskin says a key focus will be possible connections between the Trump White House and far right extremist groups such as the Proud Boys that helped lead the attack on the Capitol. Now, Raskin says a tweet from President Trump in December had a significant effect. So People are going to hear the story of that tweet and then the explosive effect it had in Trump world and specifically among the domestic violent extremist groups, the most dangerous political extremists in the country at that point. New testimony from former Trump White House legal advisor Pat Cipollone will also take center stage. Now, during Thursday's hearing, the committee, they're expected to argue that Trump failed to follow his oath of office during that riot. Well, switching gears, funeral arrangements are set this week for Japan's former prime minister. Now, a private wake is being held today for former prime minister Shinzo Abe. A private funeral will follow on Tuesday. Now, Abe was assassinated on Friday. He was shot while giving a campaign speech. He was Japan's longest serving prime minister. Now, Abe stepped down from the role back in 2020 due to health reasons. Turning to Ukraine this morning, crews are working to rescue people trapped under rubble after a Russian rocket attack slammed into an apartment in eastern Ukraine. At least 15 people are dead this morning. As many as 20 may still be trapped underneath that rubble. 
Rescuers say they are hearing cries for help. People in the town say they live in constant fear of indiscriminate attacks from Russian forces. Well, here at home, a pastor from Ukraine is in Meridian speaking at Valley Shepherd Church of the Nazarene. Now, Andre Toktai is with Nazarene Compassionate Services and began, and since the war began, he's been on a mission to deliver relief supplies to cities under attack from Kiev to Odessa. Now, some of those supplies have come from Idahoans. Uh, we wanted people to know and be aware of what's happening in Ukraine and how people can get involved and how different people, groups, organizations and churches can respond to the, to the war that we are currently having in Ukraine. Pastor Andre will thank those who have already given to relief organizations and pleaded for more help. Now, Russia's blockade of millions of tons of Ukraine's grain is now having severe consequences on northern Africa. A few days ago, the heavily indebted Tunisian government secured an emergency $130 million loan from the World Bank. That's just enough to buy flour to feed their population. This is resulting in not only rising prices for people there, they also have so little to spend. Young people, they cannot marry now. They don't have enough money to live. They cannot have a family. The impact of the war in Ukraine could not have come at a worse time. They're just recovering from the crushing COVID pandemic. Well, here in the U.S., June job numbers, they're actually better than expected, but that may not be all good news. Now, the numbers released Friday gave the White House something positive to say about the economy, but no relief for Americans still struggling through record high inflation. Now, one economist actually suggesting that the job numbers could make inflation worse. National correspondent Kayla Gaskin joins us from Washington with more on the mixed bag of economic indicators. The recent jobs report better than many anticipated. Nearly 375,000 jobs added last month. The country regaining almost every job lost in the pandemic. Average Americans, however, still not feeling great. Grocery bills remain high. The sticker price at the pump still painful for many to look at. 87% of Americans reporting anxiety about inflation. Americans are feeling that, and I think that is largely the reason folks say, uh, as you said, we're headed in the wrong direction. The high inflation and low unemployment combo is a phenomenon the U.S. economy has not experienced in 70 years. Talks of a possible looming recession continue. You know, I was just talking to a CEO of a big company, and he said, the economy's strong. Customers are buying. Businesses are strong. People are adding jobs. He said, we're trying to talk ourselves into a recession. And I agree with that. June's unemployment numbers may ease some fears about recession, but not all. You don't need four years at Dartmouth uh, Economics to know that, that when you add that $5 trillion, there has to be some outcome. The more this administration keeps telling people that a recession isn't inevitable, of course it is. Former Clinton Treasury Secretary Larry Summers stands behind his argument millions of Americans may need to lose their jobs for inflation to drop. Summers telling the London School of Economics unemployment needs to be at a 5% rate for five years to contain inflation. A tough idea to swallow for many. With Americans paying closer attention to the midterms than in previous years, the vast majority of the country maintain the economy will play a factor in how they vote. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. Here in Idaho, gas prices still hanging around about 5.21 a gallon. That is down just a few cents from a week ago, but still over 50% higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up nearby, that's still going to be Costco. You can find it there for 5.15 a gallon. Production of baby formula ramping up again at the Abbott Nutrition's Michigan plant. Damage and flooding from severe thunderstorms forced that facility to halt operations once again in mid-June. That was just two weeks after the factory reopened following a months long shutdown over a contamination issue. The closure, it did contribute to a national shortage of baby formula. Abbott says its special formula for infants went back online July 1st, but it's still working to restart production of Similac products. Yeah, definitely got to look out for all of our moms out there. All right, let's talk about temperatures because we got to look out for everybody when it comes to how hot it's going to get out there, Marcos. Yeah. I saw 103. 103 that? for tomorrow, 101 oh, okay. the following day. So uh, yep. uh, 
pretty pretty warm temperatures, yeah. right? Make I mean, sure your air conditioning is ready to go. And if yeah, if not, yeah. go. You know, you're going to want to find some way to cool down. If not water, maybe jumping in some water. Yeah. I'm thinking of taking a kiddie pool possibly to my sister's house. Yeah. I don't or know just, about that. You know, just jump in the Boise River. <laughs> pretty cool temperatures. Oh yeah, so, we were both yeah. on the river over the weekend. Yeah. It's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful time. So beautiful flow, yeah. No, what what are we looking at? Yeah, this week? Uh, near, near average temperatures for tonight. Uh, uh, 94, but tomorrow that big warm up, Sarah. Oh, yeah. And then uh, if we taking a look at this uh, outdoor forecast for this morning, uh, nice mild conditions this morning. Uh, if you're headed out the door right now, uh, sunny conditions for later today, 67 by 9 a.m., getting into the 70s by 11 and 80s and 90s by 3 and 5 p.m. this afternoon. So uh, nice near average temperatures for today. So we have uh, about a day to prepare, but here's a look at some of those current temperatures right now. 64 Nampa, 64, 66 Meridian, 62 there in Caldwell, and nice uh, mild temperatures right now across the region. 62 Glens Ferry there, Stanley 41, McCall 57, and looking at that dog walking forecast, as it warms up, just be a little cautious when you do take your furry little friend out for a walk. Uh, 60s to 70s this morning, clear, but as I said, it will be heating up today and tomorrow. That sunrise, 614 a.m. this morning and looking real quickly at our temperature history. We've been staying near normal so far this year, but these next couple of days we are going to be warming up, being a little bit above normal. Here's a look at that temperature trend 94 for today, 103 uh, tomorrow, 101 Wednesday, cooling down just a bit there on Thursday before we get back into the triple digits by Friday, folks. Here's a look at those highs for today. 93 Mountain Home, 89 there Idaho City, 93 Boise, Emmett there, that hot spot 95 and Baker City there at 87, Ontario there 97. So definitely warming up, Sarah. Yeah, already feeling that heat. Thank you, Marcos. You heard it here first. It is 511 on your Monday. Live look out there this morning at our roads. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything's still looking good and running smoothly this morning. A great start to your Monday. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a fire inside Yosemite National Park threatening a grove of ancient trees. Why the blaze may mean more than just the loss of some of the nation's oldest natural wonders. And later, a fire in Utah explodes over the weekend. Why crews are having a tough time getting a handle on the blaze. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Friday's question. Most of us have done this before, but 20% of adults say they absolutely could not do this task if they were asked to do it today. Okay, what is the answer? I'm interested. Passing a written driving test. It is difficult, folks. All right, well, for today's question, if you're going to see one, you're most likely to see one in July. All right, folks, what do you think it is? Here's a look at the weather where you are in Emmett today. Sunny conditions with a high of 95, clear skies tonight with a high of 62, and getting very hot by tomorrow, folks. 103, get that sunscreen out. Be ready for it. Thank you, Marcos. Well, several thousand firefighters are fighting fires in Portugal. Authorities, they say they've injured about 29 people already. Now, the wildfires are coming as Portugal is enduring a massive heat wave and high winds. About 96% of the southern European country was classified as being in either extreme or severe drought for the month of June. Now, 12 firefighters and 17 civilians are being treated for minor injuries caused by the blazes. Portugal has long suffered large and sometimes tragic forest fires. Back in 2017, out of control wildfires killed more than 100 people in that country. Well, here at home, the fire inside Yosemite National Park, it's been growing. It's now surpassed about 2,000 acres overnight. It's crossed into the grove where the park's ancient sequoias live. Now, Amy Kiley reports that a new concern is the health risk from the smoke that's now spreading across the state. <laughs> The race is on to protect these ancient giant sequoia trees inside Yosemite National Park. The flames of the Washburn fire first entered the grove where they live on Thursday. 
They're very close, and they're right around it. And so what we're doing right now is we're doing a combination of a cutting fire line, um, looking at burning out some other areas uh, but around the giant sequoias. The park says it thinks mitigation efforts will protect the trees from major damage. And part of the reason they've survived for millennia is they can handle smaller blazes. Mariposa Grove Road fire did slop that in the initial attack phases, about 15 acres south of the road. We do have black line containment line around that. But the Washburn fire inside the park has been growing. And here's another threat, unhealthy air quality, even in sections of the park that remain open. So we're asking people to just be responsible. And if someone has, for example, respiratory issues, to mm -hmm. be very careful in hiking and choosing their activities. Today, the smoke could worsen air quality as far west as the Bay Area. Meanwhile, the community of Wawona inside Yosemite is under evacuation orders as the fire threatens people and structures there. With so much at risk, the goal is to suppress the fire as quickly and safely as we can. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Now, the giant sequoias in Yosemite, they're among the largest and oldest trees in the entire world. Some believed to be up to 2,000 years old. Wow. All right. Well, Halfway Hill near Fillmore, Utah, they have a fire as well. It's at almost 8,000 acres this morning. It was sparked Friday afternoon. It quickly grew in about two days. That was due to erratic winds and low humidity, making containment effort difficult. About 200 personnel are battling this fire and are calling in additional resources this morning. It's great to remind people that there is high fire danger all across the state right now. Uh, the vegetation is getting extremely dry and ignitions happen very easily under these conditions. So that added diligence in what you're doing and where you're going, or whether you're out camping or you're out on ATVs, uh, be absolutely sure that you're taking the right precautions to avoid starting a new fire. That is great advice for recreators. Now, four people have been arrested in connection to this fire. They were all arrested on suspicion of abandoning a campfire that resulted in property damage greater than $1,000. Yeah, you don't want to abandon your fires. Make sure they're fully put out. Drown them if you can. That's yeah. what we always do. A big bucket of water. water Just continue. Yeah. But at least for temperatures, we're heading into those triple digits once again, but a yeah. little bit more prolonged. So a heat advisory not in effect yet, but there is potential for it. Not yet, but uh, yeah, monitoring the situation and then we did, we should know by tomorrow if that heat advisory will be in place. But for now, no heat advisory as of yet, but uh, average for today, average temperatures, mid 90s for today, tomorrow, those triple digits coming in. Uh, 10, uh, 103, I think is what I saw. So, uh, you know, check in on your family, check in, you know, AC's working, stay hydrated folks. It's gonna get hot out there. So here's our live shot right now, 59 degrees south winds, very calm start to your Monday morning. Uh, if that dew point makes it feel like 59 out there and looking at some current temperatures, 66 there Meridian, Boise there, 59, Nampa, 64, and 62 out in Caldwell. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Glens Ferry there, 62, Mountain Home there, 61, and Baker City in the mid-50s for today. So here's a look at that future cast. About 94 for today, clear, warm, hot this week. It's going to be heating up, folks. And looking at those temperature trends, 94, nice mild for today, 103 on Tuesday, 101 Wednesday, a little break there on Thursday before we get back into the triple digits by Friday. So it's going to be a warm week, folks. Here's the highs for today, 93 in Mountain Home, Idaho City there, 89, Emmett there at 95, and Baker City there at 87 degrees. Staying fairly dry for the time being, we may see a thunderstorm in the southwest uh, region of the state uh, around Tuesday through Wednesday, but we'll continue to monitor that, uh, monitor that as we approach it. So here's what we could expect. Warmer for today, those triple digits midweek, chance of thunderstorms, and the mainly, mainly hot and dry conditions. So quick look at your extended forecast. Warmer, 94, hot Tuesday, 103, 101 Wednesday, and sunny conditions for the rest of the week. Sarah? Thank you, Marcos. 520 on your Monday morning. CBS 2 News and Newstock KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A little bit of first light out there to kick off your Monday morning. Love to see that. Everything is running smoothly. Main roads, secondary roads. So, looking like a good start to your work week. When you get in the car, make sure you turn on Newstalk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, we're seeing a surge in the latest strains of coronavirus. Why experts are concerned about repeat infections. 
and later an attack on Ukraine, leaving at least 15 people dead. The efforts underway this morning to rescue people from the rubble. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 524 on your Monday. Welcome back. Health officials warning Americans to keep their guard up as new types of coronavirus are continuing to spread through the U.S. The newest is the BA5 Omicron variant that is believed to be the most contagious strain to date in part because of its ability to infect even fully vaccinated individuals. Well, two super infection Omicron strains, they've become the dominant COVID variant sweeping the U.S. California now seeing one of the most significant surges since the start of the pandemic. And now a growing number of concerns is people now becoming reinfected with the virus. Daniel Backus reports from Los Angeles about why those repeat infections are so troubling. COVID-19 is surging in San Francisco's Bay Area, where Lois Tucker refuses to lower her guard, especially after seeing her brother suffer with long COVID. The thing that bothers him the most is his, his legs and his feet, just like a tingling, numb, strange feeling in his feet. As highly contagious Omicron subvariants sweep the country, more Americans are reporting second infections. That includes here in Los Angeles, where July 4th celebrations may have fueled the COVID case rate to its highest point in nearly five months. And while symptoms are often mild, a new study tracked nearly 40,000 people who had COVID at least twice and found each reinfection creates a new opportunity for serious health risks. Some people, when they get infected the first time, you know, that infection may weaken their immune system in a way or produce some organ damage that make them more vulnerable to having adverse consequences or adverse health risks. Dr. Ziad Alali led the research, which found patients with two or more infections had more than twice the risk of dying compared to patients with just one infection. They had three times the risk of being hospitalized and faced higher odds of getting long COVID. If you've had a first infection and you managed to dodge long COVID, having a second infection, you're literally rolling the dice again. Actor Hugh Jackman and Health Secretary Javier Becerra both reported second infections last month. Mississippi Senator Roger Wicker has had it three times, a reality check that the pandemic is different now, but it's not over. Donya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. Doctors, they say the best weapons, they're still COVID vaccines and boosters. The FDA asked manufacturers to design a booster for the fall that targets those new Omicron variants. Well, still to come on CBS2 News, more January 6 hearings set for this week. What the committee says they'll be focusing on as soon as tomorrow. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS2. At 7 o'clock, we have The Neighborhood. At 7.30, Bob Hart's Abishola. Then we have NCIS for your 8 and 9 o'clock hours. And then join us for CBS2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. If you're going to see one, you're most likely to see one in July. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the president considering another move for abortion rights as protests over the issue continue across the country. Plus, a pastor from Ukraine asking for help from Idahoans, his mission to help cities under attack. And concerns of a recession are rising, why better than expected job numbers may not be good news. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, good morning. Here's a live look right now. This is downtown Boise. Nice mild conditions to your mon Monday morning. 59 degrees, south winds at 3 miles an hour. It's going to warm up later today, folks. We're going to get into the mid-90s, hot, dry conditions, and warming up later on in the week. But here's a look at some of your temperatures right now. 64 Nampa, Ontario 69, 63 out in Mountain Home, and 57 out in McCall. Taking a look at that coffee forecast for this morning. Warming up into the mid-90s for today. Sunny conditions, 
staying fairly warm this afternoon. I'm going to show you our almanac real quick here. Normal for this time of year, 92. Normal lows, 61. We're going to be a couple degrees warmer tomorrow. We're going to get into the triple digits, so even warmer for tomorrow. Looking at our high temperatures for today, 93 there, Nampa, 93 Boise, Emmett there at 95. Caldwell 94 and looking at that temperature trend for our region above normal conditions expected for the week. Sarah. Thank you, Marcos. It is 531 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and Newstock KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A little first light out there to kick off your Monday morning. Everything is looking good. Both main roads, secondary roads. So let's get on with the show. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on Newstock KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Well, we begin this morning in Washington, where President Biden says he's considering declaring a public health emergency to free up federal resources to promote abortion access. It's a hot button issue. Now, this move includes a public health emergency declaration to free up those federal resources. My ultimate goal is to reinstate Roe v. Wade as a national law by passing it in the United States Congress, and I'll sign it the moment that happens. On Friday, President Biden signed an executive order aimed at protecting abortion rights. The order, it offers new guidelines for protecting patient privacy, efforts to expand access to medical abortion as well. It also directs agencies to take steps to ensure that emergency medical care for pregnant women and those experiencing pregnancy loss. Now, after last month's Supreme Court ruling to overturn Roe v. Wade, Protesters across the country continue to, na to rally as more states move to ban or restrict abortion. Well, more than a month after the January 6th committee began its public hearings, two more are scheduled for later this week. Now, the first is set for tomorrow. That's then another will be on Thursday. Committee member Jamie Raskin says a key focus will be possible connections between the Trump White House and the far right extremist groups that helped lead the attack on that Capitol. Now, Raskin says a tweet from President Trump in December had a significant effect. So people are going to hear the story of that tweet and then the explosive effect it had in Trump world and specifically among the domestic violent extremist groups, the most dangerous political extremists in the country at that point. New Testament testimony, pardon me, from former Trump White House legal advisor Pat Cipollone will also take center stage. Now, during Thursday's hearing, the committee is expected to argue that Trump failed to follow oath of office during the riot. Well, funeral arrangements are set this week for Japan's, Japan's former prime minister. A private wake is being held today for former prime minister Shinzo Abe. A private funeral will follow on Tuesday. Now, Abe was assassinated on Friday. He was shot while giving a campaign speech. He was Japan's longest serving prime minister. Now, Abe stepped down from his role back in 2020 for health reasons. Turning to Ukraine this morning, crews are working to rescue people trapped under rubble after a Russian rocket slammed into an apartment building in eastern Ukraine. At least 15 people are dead this morning, as many as 20 still trapped underneath the rubble. Rescuers say they've heard cries for help. People in the town say they live in constant fear of indiscriminate attacks from Russian forces. Well, a pastor from Ukraine is here in Meridian speaking at the Valley Shepherd Church of the Nazarene. Andriy Taktai is the Nazarene Compassion Services. And when the war began, he's been on a mission to deliver relief supplies to cities under attack from Kiev to Odessa. And some of those supplies have come from Idahoans. We wanted people to know and be aware of what's happening in Ukraine and how people can get involved and how different people, groups, organizations and churches can respond to the, to the war that we are currently having in Ukraine. Pastor Andre both thanked those who have already given to relief organizations and pleaded for more help. Well, Russia's blockade of millions of tons of Ukraine's grain, it's now having severe consequences in northern Africa. Just a few days ago, the heavily indebted Tunisian government secured an emergency $130 million loan from the World Bank. That's just enough to buy flour to feed their population. This is resulting in rising prices for people there who have little to spend on much else. Young people, they cannot marry now. They don't have enough money to live. They cannot have a family. The impact of the war in Ukraine couldn't have come at a worse time. They're just recovering from the crushing COVID pandemic.
Well, here in the U.S., June job numbers are better than expected, but that may not be all good news. Now, the numbers released Friday gave the White House something positive to say about the economy, but did we didn't see relief for Americans struggling through record inflation. One economist actually suggesting that those job numbers could actually make inflation worse. Now, national correspondent Kayla Gaskin joins us from Washington with more on the mixed bag of economic indicators. The recent jobs report better than many anticipated. Nearly 375,000 jobs added last month. The country regaining almost every job lost in the pandemic. Average Americans, however, still not feeling great. Grocery bills remain high. The sticker price at the pump still painful for many to look at. 87% of Americans reporting anxiety about inflation. Americans are feeling that, and I think that is largely the reason folks say, uh, as you said, we're headed in the wrong direction. The high inflation and low unemployment combo is a phenomenon the U.S. economy has not experienced in 70 years. Talks of a possible looming recession continue. You know, I was just talking to a CEO of a big company, and he said, the economy's strong. Customers are buying. Businesses are strong. People are adding jobs. He said, we're trying to talk ourselves into a recession. And I agree with that. June's unemployment numbers may ease some fears about recession, but not all. You don't need four years at Dartmouth uh, Economics to know that, that when you add that $5 trillion, there has to be some outcome. The more this administration keeps telling people that a recession isn't inevitable, of course it is. Former Clinton Treasury Secretary Larry Summers stands behind his argument millions of Americans may need to lose their jobs for inflation to drop. Summers telling the London School of Economics unemployment needs to be at a 5% rate for five years to contain inflation. A tough idea to swallow for many. With Americans paying closer attention to the midterms than in previous years, the vast majority of the country maintain the economy will play a factor in how they vote. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. Here in Idaho, gas prices, they're hanging around 521 a gallon. That's down just a few cents from a week ago. It is still about 50 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to get gas is still Costco. You can find it there for 515 a gallon. Well, we are heating up as we're heading into your work week. Now, today is going to be hot, but not quite those triple digits. And it is looking like a prolonged, you know, little swath of triple digits as well. That's Tell right. Me more. Yeah, that's right, Sarah. I mean, uh, average temperatures for tonight, so but mid 90s for today. But tomorrow, those triple digits kicking in. Uh, I think 103 is what I saw, 101 uh, Wednesday. And then a little break Thursday, but warming up again on Friday. So, okay. be a good time ready. to. ready. Yeah, good time to, you know, <laughs> Get uh, checking on your family, checking on the elderly, make sure that AC is working. But here's a look at that out the door forecast for this morning. For those of you starting out your Monday morning, getting into the 80, uh, 70s by 11 a.m., 80s by 1 p.m., and then getting up into the 90s by 5 p.m. this afternoon. We are expected to get into about 94, maybe 95 degrees this afternoon. Here's a look at some of those current temperatures. Nampa 64, Meridian there at 64. I smiled conditions throughout the valley. 57 there, Mountain Home. McCall uh, 57 in Ontario 69 degrees looking at that dog walking forecast for this morning those of you taking out your pets for a walk it is going to stay in the 60s mid 70s this morning clearing up heating up this afternoon so keep that in mind if you are going to be walking your dog later on in the day but that sunrise 6 14 a.m. here's a look at the temperature history we've been staying fairly mild as you can see there on 4th of July we were a little below normal there um, yesterday a little below normal too but heating up over over the next couple days folks here's a look at those temperature trends 94 monday those triple digits for the next couple days 99 there 103 on friday so getting fairly warm sarah quick look at those forecast highs across the region salt lake there 96 elko 97 those triple digits on the west coast and we're going to be matching those here in a couple days sarah all right, thank you, Marcos. It is 540 on your Monday. Live look out there. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything is looking good.
Yeah, all roads running smoothly out there. Happy Monday morning to you. Hope you're having a good one at home. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And now it's time for our question of the day. That question is, if you're going to see one, you're most likely to see one in July. What is it? All right. The one thing I would like to see the most in July is a snow cone stand. I know it's National Slurpee Day today. It's 7 Eleven. Yes. Yeah. So finding ways to cool down is kind of what my, my mind track is on. What about you, Marco? Snow cone stand. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, it, probably like a, I'd say snow cone, sta snow cone stand as well. Yeah. Like, or maybe I mean, a parade. If you're going to see a parade, it's going to be in July. Yeah. Um, let's think. What else, guys? What do some of our viewers this morning think? <laughs> a <laughs> sunburn. sunburn. Sarah yeah. was just talking about her sunburn. <laughs> I am hurting from my sunburn, Ed, um, from floating the Boise River. So, yeah, again, wear yes. sunscreen, but remember to reapply the sunscreen. Yes. That's the main thing. A lot of That's, people forget that. Yeah, myself included. All right, Doug, fireworks. Yeah. Fireworks, yeah. I don't see any fireworks. Well, yeah. I guess New Year's Eve, sometimes you see fireworks, sometimes, but mainly yeah. in July, you know, yeah. that's the that's the big time it's of the year. It's nice fireworks this year at yeah. that, and oh, Morrison. Beautiful. Corey says a leprechaun. Yeah. I okay, mean, Corey. Cor <laughs> <laughs> okay, Corey, calling him out. Corey, it's July. I don't know about that. <laughs> but keep guessing again. We still have lots of time, about another hour and 15 minutes. So if you're at home, you think you know the answer, make sure to head on over to our Facebook page or our Twitter. You can guess there, and we'll read some more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. Oh, Corey, you kill me. All right, still to come on CBS 2 News This Morning, some four-legged friends are helping out in Highland Park, Illinois. Illinois following the deadly shooting there last week, how these dogs are now helping the community. Here's a look at your local forecast out in Baker City for today. 89 degrees, that sunshine sticking around. Tonight, clear conditions, 48 degrees. And tomorrow, sunny conditions with a high of 98. Thank you, Marcos. Well, families in Uvalde, Texas are continuing to rally after the school shooting at an elementary school there. Now, they want something to be done after what's now being described as a botched police response. Now, Sarah Duran shares their frustrations. And all we did was get lies from the very beginning. Vincent and Salazar is demanding change in Uvalde after the mass shooting at Robb Elementary on May 24th. His granddaughter, Layla Salazar, was one of the 21 victims. I'm just asking for people to do their job and to protect these beautiful babies. Salazar blames the officers for their lack of response during the shooting, expressing frustration with school police chief Pete Arredondo, plus the conflicting information about the investigation from state and local leaders since. Him and the other people that were standing in that room for 70 minutes have no business wearing a badge. So he's taking a stand and using his voice for Layla. She is very worth marching for. One more time. Marching in the Unheard Voices March and Rally, many of the victims' families participating. The father of victim Jacqueline Casares helped organize it. In a powerful show of solidarity, people are marching from Robb Elementary School to the downtown square for a rally, shouting, no justice, no peace. Amory Joe Garza's family and others also demanding Arredondo step down from his role with the school district. He stepped down as city councilman in early July. Turn in your badge and resign. Other victim families calling for accountability among city leadership, increased school safety and gun reform. We only ask that they place greater effort in keeping military style weapons from young adults under 21 years That's of age. Like these families, Salazar could also go on, but hopes this march is another step in creating change in his community. I'm sorry, we can't not have this anymore. Now, the Uvalde County Sheriff is expected to testify today about that massacre at Robb Elementary. Now, Sheriff Ruben Nolasco is scheduled to a video conference with a panel in Texas investigating that mass shooting where 19 children and two teachers were murdered. Now, Nolasco agreed to talk after he was issued an official notice. Now, according to the Texas House Investigative Committee, their preliminary report could be released within the next week. Now, that's not expected to include video showing victims or any of the violence.
Well, the Highland Park community is getting some support nearly a week after a mass shooting that left seven people dead and a dozen injured there. Now, these therapy dogs, they traveled to Illinois to help lend a paw. They attended vigils and stopped by hospitals to help those still struggling to process the events of last week. It's not just people who saw things that happened. It's not just people who were at the event. It's everybody in this community. Everybody is affected. Now, there were some challenges to getting to Highland Park. However, their flight got canceled and ended up driving about 12 hours to get there. Yeah, when duty calls, again, the pooches are out and helping. I love that. Never a bad idea, right? Never a bad idea. No. Yeah, no, if you need to find comfort, your animals, I guess, are number one. And you're definitely going to want to be finding comfort uh, this week if you haven't seen your seven-day forecast yet because it's going to get hot. Marcos, tell them about it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> warming up, uh, heating up, I should say, right? Triple yeah. digits tomorrow. Triple, uh, a couple days there of triple digits, though. Uh, long, today, yeah. uh, near average, so... I get at least a day to prepare for that. But uh, looking at this is our live shot right now. Downtown Boise, a nice mild start to your Monday morning. South winds at three miles an hour. Um, it's, but folks, it, it's going to warm up for today once again. Looking at our current temperatures across the valley. For those of you uh, in, out in Nampa, 64 there. Caldwell, 62. Meridian there, 64. And looking at other areas across uh, the valley. Mountain Home there, 57. Baker City, 55 and Glens Ferry there at 62. So uh, again, our forecast for today, 94, clear, warm, and as I said, warming up this week, folks. So I'm going to show you our temperature trends for the week, 94 for today. Those triple digits Tuesday, Wednesday, a little break there on Thursday, about one or two degrees cooler, but getting back up into those triple digits by Friday. So looking at our highs for today, 93 there, Mountain Home, 93 out in Nampa, Mountain Home there, uh, Boise there, 93, and Caldwell there at 94 degrees. So quick rundown of what we could expect. Warmer today, triple digits, a chance of thunderstorms on Tuesday in the south, uh, southwest area, and mainly, mainly hot and dry conditions. So here's a look at the extended forecast. Warmer today, those very hot conditions Tuesday, Wednesday, staying sunny on Thursday, Friday, uh, that's six, uh, triple digit on Friday, and sunny for the weekend, Sarah. Thank you, Marcos. 550 on your Monday. Let's take a live look outside there at the roads because CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. It is looking good out there. Main roads, secondary roads running smoothly. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, a group of teens to the rescue. How these friends in California helped a family escape their house fire. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Engines revved and taking to the road. These bikers headed out to a 55-mile ride to Mountain Home for this year's Idaho Patriot Thunder ride. Now, this is the 12th year for Patriot Thunder, easily the largest motorcycle ride in the Gem State. Now, this year, it was limited to just 1,200 bikes. All the money raised by Patriot Thunder, it goes to two Idaho charities that help military families. Now, one is the Family Support Fund for the Idaho Guard and Reserve. The other is Operation Warm Heart out of Mountain Home Air Force Base. Now, twice this spring, the ride had to be postponed because of rain. Hey, it's just a great day for a ride. It's beautiful. We live in a free country because of our veterans and what they do, our military, in securing our border and our freedom is critical for our country. So I do this every year. If it wasn't for those men and women in uniform, that we wouldn't be able to do what we do. And God bless them all. Now, riders got a police escort down 84. They ended up at Carl Miller Park in Mountain Home. It was a beautiful day for a ride, finally. And switching gears this morning, the Caldwell community also came together over the weekend to honor the life of Deputy Chief Brad Trosky Johnson. Now, Trosky Johnson died last month after suffering a medical emergency while at his home. The procession started at Caldwell Fire Station 1 and headed to the Idaho Ford Idaho Center for his funeral. People gathered along the route to pay respects during the escort. Now, Trosky Johnson was widely acknowledged in the Treasure Valley and throughout the state of Idaho as a fire training expert. 
He had a passion for teaching both recruits and veteran firefighters. Now, Trotsky Johnson was 55 years old. If you want to see a photo gallery of the procession, you can head to IdahoNews.com. Well, before we go, we'd like to share this story with you. A group of teens in California jumped into action after a home burst into flames. And Marley Ginter shares this daring rescue and how they're now being hailed as heroes. One by one, three teenagers led a family out of a burning home. The little girl, yeah, and then the other kid in the back, that's seven. I think Seven. it was eight. When Jesus, better known as Chewy, to his buddies, saw smoke at a neighbor's house, he ran to make sure everyone was all right. We started, we started banging. We started, we started banging on the doors. We started throwing rocks to the window to see if they wake up. When that wasn't enough, he kicked down the door. I saw a little kid, so I took him to the front. I gave them to someone to carry them, and then I went back. Chewy's sister caught all the chaos on camera. In my voice in the video, you can hear, like, it's already cracking because I wanted to cry. I was just scared. What about you, Pedro? Were you scared? I mean, kind of, but once I seen Chewy come out, I was like, I'm going to just go in there with them. So if anything happened to him, I could get him out. Sounds like you all had each other's backs. Yeah. Basically. They did something really, really amazing. Yeah, way to go, Mom. When you were watching the video, though, did you get a little nervous? I did. I did. I was scared because I'm hearing Chewie's sister, you know, screaming, and I'm like, oh, my God, what's going on? You know, that, that fear of a parent, you know, like you want to protect your children. That instinct clearly passed down to these boys who never hesitated to save complete strangers from a burning house. It's the right thing to do, you know, like, like, it's like basically put it in your shoes. Like if your house is burning, would you like someone to help you or not? Like like that, you know, like I would I would appreciate if someone came and helped me if, if my house was burning down. Well said. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, an attack on Ukraine leaving 15 people dead. The effort underway this morning to rescue people from the rubble. And more from the January 6th committee when we come back. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, the president considering another move for abortion rights as protests over the issue continue across the country. Plus, a pastor from Ukraine asking for help from Idahoans, his mission to help cities under attack. And concerns of a recession are rising. Why better than expected job numbers may not be good news. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look from downtown Boise on this July 11th, 2022. A beautiful start to our morning out there, but temperatures are going to heat up and quickly. First couple days of triple digit temperatures, at least prolonged triple digit temperatures are heading our way for your work week. But at least this morning as you're stepping out, looking pretty mild out there. Good morning, Marcos. That's right, Sarah. Warming up into those triple digits for by tomorrow, but today mild conditions this morning. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on right now. Calm winds out there. A nice mild start to your Monday morning, 59 degrees. So uh, staying fairly cool for this morning, but warming up to near average temperatures later today. Here's a look at some of those temperatures across the valley. 64 there, Nampa, Ontario there, 66, Mountain Home, 62, and McCall there at 57 degrees. Taking a quick look at that coffee forecast for today, 94 today and sunny. So uh, looking at our almanac for this afternoon as well, 92 degrees, a low of 61 is our average, but we're going to be getting to that about two degrees warmer than that. So here's a look at some of those high temperatures this morning uh, for this afternoon. 93 Boise, 93 there, Mountain Home, Nampa there at 93 and Caldwell there at 93 as well. So going to stay pretty warm for the next couple of weeks. Here's a look at those temperature trends above normal favored for our region, Sarah. 
Thank you, Marcos. Yeah, it is heating up. All right, 601 on your Monday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything running smoothly out there this morning, both on our main roads and secondary roads. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And we do begin this morning in Washington, where President Biden says he's considering declaring a public health emergency to free up federal resources to promote abortion access. It's a hot button issue, and this move, it does include a public health emergency declaration to help free up those resources. My ultimate goal is to reinstate Roe v. Wade as a national law by passing it in the United States Congress, and I'll sign it the moment that happens. On Friday, President Biden signed an executive order aimed at protecting abortion rights. That order offers new guidelines for protecting patient privacy and efforts to expand access to medical abortion. It also directs agencies to step to take steps to ensure emergency medical care for women who are pregnant and those experiencing pregnancy loss. Now, this is after last month's Supreme Court ruling to overturn Roe v. Wade. In the meantime, protesters across the country are continuing to rally as more states move to either ban or restrict abortion. Well, more than a month after the January 6th committee began its public hearings, we have two more scheduled for this week. The first is set for tomorrow. Another will be held on Thursday. Committee member Jamie Raskin says a key focus will be possible connections between the Trump White House and far right extremist groups such as the Proud Boys that helped lead the attack on the Capitol. Now Raskin says a tweet from President Trump in December had a significant effect. So people are going to hear the story of that tweet and then the explosive effect it had in Trump world and specifically among the domestic violent extremist groups, the most dangerous political extremists in the country at that point. New testimony from former Trump White House legal advisor Pat Cipollone. It'll be center stage. Now, during Thursday's hearing, the committee is expected to argue that Trump failed to follow his oath of office during the riot. Well, turning to Ukraine this morning, crews, they're working to rescue people trapped under rubble after a Russian rocket slammed into an apartment building in eastern Ukraine. This morning, at least 15 people are dead. As many as 20 may still be trapped beneath this rubble. Rescuers say they've heard cries for help. Now, some of the town say they live in constant fear of indiscriminate attacks from Russian forces. Well, a pastor from Ukraine, he's here in Meridian speaking at the Valley Shepherd Church of the Nazarene. Now, Andre Toktai is the Nazarene Compassionate Services. And since the war began, he's been on a mission to deliver relief supplies to cities under attack from Kiev to Odessa. Now, some supplies have even come from Idahoans. We wanted people to know and be aware of what's happening in Ukraine and how people can get involved and how different people, groups, organizations and churches can respond to the to the war that we are currently having in Ukraine. Now, Pastor Andre both thanked those who've already given to relief organizations and pleaded for more help. Well, back here in the U.S., June job numbers were far better than expected, but that may not be all good news. The number released on Friday, it did give the White House something positive to talk about for the economy, but no real relief for Americans struggling through record inflation. Now, one economist actually suggesting that those job numbers could make inflation worse. Now, national correspondent Kayla Gaskin, she joins us from Washington with more on this mixed bag of economic indicators. The recent jobs report better than many anticipated. Nearly 375,000 jobs added last month. The country regaining almost every job lost in the pandemic. Average Americans, however, still not feeling great. Grocery bills remain high. The sticker price at the pump still painful for many to look at. 87% of Americans reporting anxiety about inflation. Americans are feeling that, and I think that is largely the reason folks say, uh, as you said, we're headed in the wrong direction. The high inflation and low unemployment combo is a phenomenon the U.S. economy has not experienced in 70 years. Talks of a possible looming recession continue. You know, I was just talking to a CEO of a big company, and he said, the economy's strong. Customers are buying. Businesses are strong. People are adding jobs. He said, we're trying to talk ourselves into a recession. And I agree with that. June's unemployment numbers may ease some fears about recession, but not all. 
You don't need four years at Dartmouth uh, Economics to know that, that when you add that $5 trillion, there has to be some outcome. The more this administration keeps telling people that a recession isn't inevitable, of course it is. Former Clinton Treasury Secretary Larry Summers stands behind his argument millions of Americans may need to lose their jobs for inflation to drop. Summers telling the London School of Economics unemployment needs to be at a 5% rate for five years to contain inflation. A tough idea to swallow for many. With Americans paying closer attention to the midterms than in previous years, the vast majority of the country maintain the economy will play a factor in how they vote. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. Here in Idaho this morning, gas prices hanging around about 5.21 a gallon. That's down just a few cents from a week ago, but still about 50 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up nearby will be Costco. You can find it for 5.15 a gallon there. Well, production of baby formula ramping up again at Abbott's Nutritional Nutrition's Michigan plant. Now, damage and flooding from severe thunderstorms, they forced that facility to halt operations back in mid-June. That was just two weeks after the factory reopened following months-long shutdown over a contamination issue. The closure contributed to a national shortage of baby formula. Now, Abbott says its special formula for infants went back online July 1st, but it is still working to restart production of its Similac products. All right, Marcos, we got to start talking about this, these temperature trends because we are on the up and up. Finally, Mother Nature is is seeing its July and we're getting some triple digits yep. in store. Turning up the thermostat. You <laughs> Turn know, it on like, up. <laughs> like, Let's go. Nice uh, triple digits coming in tomorrow. Uh, high pressure, dry, hot, sticking around for the next couple days. Uh, we are going to see mild for today, right? A little average, 94. Um, but he's yeah. preparing us before you preparing know, before us. It really starts yeah. to heat up. But the, you know, those triple digits sticking around for a couple days. Here's a quick look at that out the door forecast for those of you starting out your morning right now. 67 there, uh, 78 by 11 a.m., 83 by 1, and getting slowly getting up into those 90s throughout the day. Here's a look at some of our current temperatures right now. 64 there, Nampa, 63 Meridian, Boise there at 59. And looking across the region right now, 60 there on Glens Ferry, Twin Falls, 62 degrees. So nice mild start to your Monday morning. And taking a quick look at your dog walking forecast, uh, staying in the 60s through the 70s for this morning, heating up, clearing up, uh, sunrise there at 6.14 a.m. And just be cautious if you're taking out your puppy there for uh, in the hot temperatures. But here's our history for the past couple of weeks. So we've been floating around normal conditions. Uh, there you see there on July 4th, we were below normal, but uh, the ne next couple days, folks, above average temperatures. Here's a look at those trends right now. 94 Monday, one, uh, triple digits right there, Tuesday, Wednesday, a little break on Thursday before we get back into those triple digits by Friday. So it's definitely going to be a warm week. And looking at those forecast highs, triple digits on the West Coast, 93 there, Boise, Idaho Falls, there 90, but we'll soon be matching these triple digits by tomorrow, Sarah. All right, prepare mentally now, folks. It's going to heat up. It is 610 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything looking good and flowing well this morning. That's what we like to see to kick off our work week. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Let's get a quick check out there from Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. Uh, doing fine. Yep, everything is very quiet. That is usually the case this time of the morning as far as uh, 84 goes. Uh, we do have a injury crash being reported in uh, Canyon County. Injury crash reported at the intersection of Orchard Avenue and Montana. Uh, traffic light in that area, but crews uh, rolling to check that one out. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. Again, when you get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, a fire inside Yosemite National Park threatening a grove of ancient trees. Why the blaze may mean more than just the loss of some of the nation's oldest natural wonders. Plus, a fire in Utah exploded over the weekend. Why crews are having a tough time getting a handle on the blaze. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Friday's question. Most of us have done this before, but 20% of adults say they absolutely could not do this task if they were asked to do it. The answer, 
passing a written driving test. Yeah, it's been a few years. I'm definitely a little rusty, probably. Okay, well, for today's question, if you're going to see one, you're most likely to see one in the month of July. Okay, folks, what is it? Here's a quick look at your local forecast in Emmett for today's sunny conditions with a high of 95 clear skies in the forecast for tonight 62 and tomorrow things are warming up to those triple digits of 103. Thank you, Marcos. Well, several thousand firefighters are fighting in Portugal this morning. Authorities say that those fires have already injured 29 people. The wildfires are coming as Portugal is enduring a heat wave coupled with high winds. About 96% of the southern European country was classified as being in either extreme or severe drought for the month of June. About 12 firefighters and 17 civilians are currently being treated for minor injuries caused by this fire. Now, Portugal has long suffered large and sometimes tragic forest fires. Back in 2017, out of control wildfires there killed more than 100 people. Well, the fire inside Yosemite National Park, it's been growing. It's now surpassed about 2,000 acres overnight. It's now crossed into the grove where the park's ancient sequoias live. Amy Kiley reports that a new concern is the health risk from smoke that's now spreading across the state. The race is on to protect these ancient giant sequoia trees inside Yosemite National Park. The flames of the Washburn fire first entered the grove where they live on Thursday. They're very close and they're right around it. And so what we're doing right now is we're doing a combination of a cutting fire line, um, looking at burning out some other areas uh, but around the giant sequoias. The park says it thinks mitigation efforts will protect the trees from major damage. And part of the reason they've survived for millennia is they can handle smaller blazes. Mariposa Grove Road fire did slop that in the initial attack phases, about 15 acres south of the road. We do have black line containment line around that. But the Washburn fire inside the park has been growing. And here's another threat, unhealthy air quality, even in sections of the park that remain open. So we're asking people to just be responsible. And if someone has, for example, respiratory issues, to mm -hmm. be very careful in hiking and choosing their activities. Today, the smoke could worsen air quality as far west as the Bay Area. Meanwhile, the community of Wawona inside Yosemite is under evacuation orders as the fire threatens people and structures there. With so much at risk, the goal is to suppress the fire as quickly and safely as we can. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Now, the giant sequoias in Yosemite, they're among the nation's largest and oldest trees, actually not only in the nation, but the world. Some believe to be about 2,000 years old. Well, the Halfway Hill Fire, that's near Fillmore, Utah, central Utah. It's at almost 8,000 acres this morning. It sparked Friday afternoon and quickly grew in those two days. Erratic winds and low humidity made containment efforts difficult for crews. About 200 personnel are battling the fire all calling in additional resources. It's great to remind people that there is high fire danger all across the state right now. Uh, the vegetation is getting extremely dry and ignitions happen very easily under these conditions. So that added diligence in what you're doing and where you're going, or whether you're out camping or you're out on ATVs, I'll be absolutely sure that you're taking the right precautions to avoid starting a new fire. Good advice. Now, four people have been arrested in connection to this fire. They were all arrested on suspicion of abandoning a campfire, resulting in property damage greater than $1,000. Yeah, those wildfires definitely exceed $1,000 in damage. Worst <sighs> part of the summer, right? I mean, it seeing, is. Yeah, it's just, it's so it. dry out there right now. Yeah. So if you are recreating, I know we all love to be camping. That's one of my favorite things to do yeah. during the summer, but we got to be smart about it, guys. So just keep it in mind if you're going to recreate, pack in, pack out. And if you have any campfires, please put them yeah. out fully before you leave. Yeah. yeah. It's just those easy things keeping us safe and keeping our forests safe so we can all use them for yeah. years to come, hopefully. Yeah, so, all right. Well, the one thing that I'm looking forward to this week, Marcos, it's going to get hot. I don't know if I'm looking forward to it exactly, but I'm looking forward to at least getting in the water to at least help relieve some of that. heat. Yeah, I mean, and it's going to be a good week to do that because we're going to be seeing those above average temperatures starting tomorrow, 
triple digits. Uh, I think I'm seeing 103, 101 possibly by Wednesday, but uh, we have some time to prepare because we're going to be seeing average temperatures for today, about 94. Uh, let's start out by taking a look at this uh, beautiful live shot right now. That's sunrise coming in, calm winds out there. Nice uh, start to your Monday morning, folks. Here's a look at some of those current temperatures. Right now there's Meridian there at 63, 63 there in Nampa, Caldwell there at 61 for those of you starting out your day in those areas. And looking across the region, 57 Mountain Home, Glens Ferry there 58 in Baker City, 48 degrees. Now, going to show you these temperature trends real quick. Um, staying in the mid 90s for today, nice average, ab slightly above average, but those triple digits Tuesday, Wednesday, a little dip there on Thursday, but getting back into those triple digits by Friday. So about three days of really hot weather, folks. Make sure you're staying hydrated, checking in on your loved ones, making sure that AC is working and looking at our high temps for today. 93 there, Mountain Home, Idaho City there, 89, Stanley there, 83 and Emmett there, 95 degrees. So here's a quick rundown. Those warm today, triple digits by tomorrow, chance of thunderstorms on Tuesday for the southwest region and mainly dry and hot conditions. So here's a look at that extended forecast. Warmer for today, hot conditions Tuesday, Wednesday, triple digits, sunny for the rest of the week, triple digits Friday and staying sunny by the weekend 90s. Quick look at that extended mountain forecast, sunny getting into the 90s by tomorrow, 80s for the rest of the week, but that sunshine is going to be sticking around folks. So a good week to get out there and hopefully Hopefully enjoy that really hot weather. Oh, thank you, Marcos. It is 620 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and Newstalk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check out there from the Newstalk Traffic Center's Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking out there? Good morning. Uh, doing okay all the way around. I-84 right now, east and west of Boise. Nothing kicking in. Friday, uh, Mondays can be a little lighter than usual in the mornings, just like a, a Friday. And that has been the case so far. We'll see what goes later on, but uh, quiet right now. A uh, crash being reported in Nampa, and that is uh, Orchard Avenue and Montana out near Lake Lowell. But traffic, of course, very light in that area. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates and still to come on CBS 2 News this morning. We're seeing a surge in the latest strains of coronavirus. Why experts are concerned about repeat infections and later an attack on Ukraine leaves 15 people dead. The efforts underway this morning to rescue people from the rubble. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 624 on your Monday. Welcome back to super infectious Omicron strains. They've become the dominant COVID variant sweeping the U.S. California now seeing one of its most significant surges since the start of the pandemic. And now a growing concern is the number of people getting reinfected with the virus. Daniel Backus reports from Los Angeles about why those repeat infections are so troubling. COVID-19 is surging in San Francisco's Bay Area, where Lois Tucker refuses to lower her guard, especially after seeing her brother suffer with long COVID. The thing that bothers him the most is his, his legs and his feet, just like a tingling, numb, strange feeling in his feet. As highly contagious Omicron subvariants sweep the country, more Americans are reporting second infections. That includes here in Los Angeles, where July 4th celebrations may have fueled the COVID case rate to its highest point in nearly five months. And while symptoms are often <laughs> mild, a new study tracked nearly 40,000 people who had COVID at least twice and found each reinfection creates a new opportunity for serious health risks. Some people, when they get infected the first time, you know, that infection may weaken their immune system in a way or produce some organ damage that make them more vulnerable to having adverse consequences or adverse health risks. Dr. Ziad Alali led the research, which found patients with two or more infections had more than twice the risk of dying compared to patients with just one infection. They had three times the risk of being hospitalized and faced higher odds of getting long COVID. If you've had a first infection and you managed to dodge long COVID, having a second infection, you're literally rolling the dice. 
dice again. Actor Hugh Jackman and Health Secretary Javier Becerra both reported second infections last month. Mississippi Senator Roger Wicker has had it three times, a reality check that the pandemic is different now, but it's not over. Danya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. Now, doctors say the best weapons are still COVID vaccines and boosters. The FDA has asked manufacturers to design a booster for the fall that specifically targets those new Omicron variants. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News, more January 6 hearings set for this week. What the committee says they'll be focusing on as soon as tomorrow. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. After all of your favorites, you can join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. If you're going to see one, you're most likely to see one in the month of July. All right, folks, what do you think it is? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the president considering another move for abortion rights as protests over the issue continue across the country. Plus, a pastor from Ukraine asking for help from Idahoans, his mission to help cities under attack. And concerns of a recession, they're rising. Why better than expected job numbers may not be good news. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Well, good morning and a happy Monday to you folks. Here's a look at our live shot right now. We are going to be warming up today, but taking a look at our current forecast right now, a nice calm and mild start to your Monday morning, 59 degrees out there. Here's a look at some of our temperatures across the area this morning, 62 there, Mountain Home, McCall there, 57, Ontario there at 66, and Nampa there at 63 degrees. Taking a quick look at that coffee forecast, we are going to be warming up for today. Nice above average conditions 94 degrees there before our big warm up tomorrow triple digits folks so here's a look at the almanac 92 degrees is our normal we're going to be about 94 95 a couple degrees warmer than that but here's a look at those high temperatures 93 boise 95 emmett there 94 out in caldwell and ontario there at 97 degrees looking at our temperature trends for the next couple weeks we are going to be staying above normal for this area folks those triple triple digit temperatures coming in tomorrow. So it's going to be a warm week, Sarah. Thank you, Marco. 631 on your Monday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBY. We bring you team traffic all morning long. It is looking good out there. May need some sunglasses if you are heading eastbound. But when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBY. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. President Biden says he's considering declaring a public health emergency to free up federal resources to help promote abortion access. Now, it's a hot button issue. This move includes a public health emergency declaring free to free up those federal resources. My ultimate goal is to reinstate Roe v. Wade as a national law by passing it in the United States Congress, and I'll sign it the moment that happens. On Friday, President Biden signed an executive order aimed at protecting abortion rights. That order offers new guidelines for protecting patient privacy and efforts to expand access to medical abortion. It also directs agencies to take steps to ensure emergency medical care for pregnant women and those experiencing pregnancy loss. Now this, after last month's Supreme Court ruling to reverse Roe v. Wade, protesters across the nation are continuing to rally as more states move to ban or restrict abortion. Well, more than a month after the January 6th committee began its public hearings, two more are scheduled for this week. Now the first is set for tomorrow, then another held on Thursday. Committee member Jamie Raskin says a key focus will be possible connections between the Trump White House and far right extremist groups that helped lead the attack on the Capitol. Now Raskin says a tweet from President Trump in December had a significant effect. So people are going to hear the story of that tweet and then the explosive effect it had in Trump world and specifically among the domestic violent extremist groups, the most dangerous political extremists in the country at that point. 
New testimony from former Trump White House legal advisor Pat Cipollone will also be center stage. Now, during Thursday's hearings, the committee is expected to argue that Trump failed to follow his oath of office during the riot. Turning to Ukraine this morning, crews, they're working to rescue people trapped under rubble after a Russian rocket slammed into an apartment building in eastern Ukraine. This morning, at least 15 people are dead, as many as 20 still trapped beneath this rubble. Rescuers say they've heard help cries for help. People in the town say they live in constant fear of indiscriminate attacks from Russian forces. Well, a pastor from Ukraine is in Meridian. He's speaking at the Valley Shepherd Church of the Nazarene. His name's Andrei Toktai, and he's with Nazarene Compassion Services. Since the war began, he's been on a mission to deliver relief supplies to cities under attack from Kiev to Odessa. Now, some of those supplies have even come from Idahoans. We wanted people to know and be aware of what's happening in Ukraine and how people can get involved and how different people, groups, organizations and churches can respond to the to the war that we are currently having in Ukraine. Pastor Andrit will thank those who have given to relief organizations and pleaded for more help. June job numbers were better than expected, but that may not be all good news. The numbers released Friday gave the White House something positive to say about the economy, but still no relief for Americans who are struggling through record inflation. Now, one economist actually suggesting that those job numbers could make inflation worse. Our national correspondent Kayla Gaskin joins us from Washington with more on this mixed bag of economic indicators. The recent jobs report better than many anticipated. Nearly 375,000 jobs added last month. The country regaining almost every job lost in the pandemic. Average Americans, however, still not feeling great. Grocery bills remain high. The sticker price at the pump still painful for many to look at. 87% of Americans reporting anxiety about inflation. Americans are feeling that, and I think that is largely the reason folks say, uh, as you said, we're headed in the wrong direction. The high inflation and low unemployment combo is a phenomenon the U.S. economy has not experienced in 70 years. Talks of a possible looming recession continue. You know, I was just talking to a CEO of a big company, and he said, the economy's strong. Customers are buying. Businesses are strong. People are adding jobs. He said, we're trying to talk ourselves into a recession. And I agree with that. June's unemployment numbers may ease some fears about recession, but not all. You don't need four years at Dartmouth uh, Economics to know that, that when you add that $5 trillion, there has to be some outcome. The more this administration keeps telling people that a recession isn't inevitable, of course it is. Former Clinton Treasury Secretary Larry Summers stands behind his argument millions of Americans may need to lose their jobs for inflation to drop. Summers telling the London School of Economics unemployment needs to be at a 5% rate for five years to contain inflation. A tough idea to swallow for many. With Americans paying closer attention to the midterms than in previous years, the vast majority of the country maintain the economy will play a factor in how they vote. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. Here in Idaho, gas prices hanging around about 5.21 a gallon. That's down just a few cents from a week ago, but still about 50 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up still Costco. You can find it for 5.15 a gallon there. Yeah, and it is heating up as we're heading further into your work week, mid 90s today. But after that, that's when the triple digits finally yeah. kick on in. And I do want to note the one thing we haven't talked about this morning, of course, is our pets. So I've seen a lot of people out walking their dog in like kind of the heat of the day. Right, right. Just a reminder again, that asphalt is very hot. Concrete can get really hot too. So just want to look out for our puppers out Probably there. like morning, right? Early morning. Early morning, walk, yeah, or, or, or late, late at, at night, night, yeah. Yeah, so. It's the, it's the best time anyways. Yeah. I think the midday, you're going to get way too hot anyways yeah. with these temperatures. I do my walks late at night. So, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah uh, average temperatures for tonight, uh, triple digits tomorrow, sticking around for a couple of days, Sarah. So, uh, you know, I know you're going to be out probably paddle boarding at some point because, uh, but here's a look at that out the door forecast for this morning. For those of you starting out your day, going to get into the 80s by around 1 o'clock today, 89 there at 3 p.m., and 90s by 5, 67 at 9 a.m., 76 
by 11 a.m. And here are some of your current temperatures for those of you starting out your day in those areas. Caldwell there 61, Nampa there 63, Meridian 63 as well. And looking at some other uh, areas, 57 there, Mountain Home, 57 out in McCall and 36 there out in Stanley. So uh, as we just talked about, right, um, that dog walking forecast, 60s to 70s for this morning. It will be heating up so at sunrise uh, at 6 14 so yeah, make sure you're taking out the dogs for early morning later at night walks but uh, just for um, better for them so looking at our temperature history we've been staying pretty average near normal for temperatures you know fourth of july there we had a cooler day yesterday we had a cooler day but warming up into those triple digits we are going to be seeing uh, above average so 94 Triple digits right there Tuesday, Wednesday, 99 on Thursday and back into the triple 103 by Friday, folks. I'm going to show you real quick area forecast highs across the region. Reno there at 98. Those triple digits there, Medford, Redding, Sacramento, Idaho Falls there at 90 and Boise at 93. But we're going to get into those triple digits by this week, Sarah. All right, Marcos, get ready for it to heat on up. It is 639 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center with an update on our roads. How's it looking out there, Ron? Still not uh, doing too bad with the drive. I-84, a little crowding, trying to show up now and then, getting a little more volume consistently uh, coming on the freeway, for example, 10-mile Meridian Road, but not much at all. Had some slowing for a little while near the Caldwell Airport. That backed off. And other routes start to kick in with a little morning traffic, like Highway 2026 at Middleton Road when the light's red, getting a little local backing there at least, and uh, starting to get a little busier in general. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all of Ron's updates. Now it's time for question of the day. That question is, if you're going to see one, you're most likely to see one in July. All right, folks, what is it? Marcos, what are you thinking? Uh, you know, I'm going to go with parades. I mean, <laughs> parades? Yeah, yeah, no, I like it. We had snow cone stands. We had fireworks, one of the guesses for that. I honestly am now thinking it's fireworks. fireworks it, it, it has yeah. to be fireworks. What other time of the year do you see them? Yeah. Well, aside uh, from January, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Verlin says hummingbirds. Yes, um, one of my yeah. neighbors has a hummingbird feeder. And one of my favorite things in the morning is to go out there and they're all swarmed around the little bird feeder. Lots of birds out this time Getting of year, right? Getting their food. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Steven says a comet. We have a lot of great, again, a yeah, lot of great things going on, at least sky-wise, star-wise. Yeah. During the um, summer, yeah. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. Lots of comment yeah oh james the ice cream truck i didn't even think about the ice cream truck yeah well we said snow coats close yeah, enough something yeah, to keep yeah. you cool uh, yeah it will be with these warm temperatures i mean you need something to keep you cool so. yeah one of my favorite things growing up was the ice cream truck coming through yes. our little area did you have the ice cream truck growing See, up marcos yes but i was more of a snow cone person you were snow yeah. <laughs> you're like no thank you get out of here ice I like, cream I love truck that sugary syrup <laughs> call me so. when the snow cones come okay folks well if you think you know the answer still about 15 minutes left to guess. You can do that on our Facebook or Twitter page. And of course, we'll read the answer coming up right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News, some four-legged friends helping out in Highland Park, Illinois, following the deadly shooting last week. How these dogs are now helping the community. Here's a look at your adventure weather today in Baker City. Sunny conditions with a high of 89. Clear skies for tonight, high of 48. And tomorrow, sunny with a high of 98. Thank you, Marcos. The Highland Park community getting some support nearly a week after the mass shooting that left seven people dead and nearly a dozen injured. Now, therapy dogs are traveling to Illinois to help lend a paw. They attended vigils and stopped by hospitals to help those still struggling to process last week's events. Now, there were challenges for those getting to Highland Park as well. Their flight, they did get canceled, and they actually ended up driving about 12 hours to get there big stuff. All right, well, let's switch it over to weather really quick because we do have triple digit temperatures heading our way. Potential for 103 degrees, according to Marcos, but it's better at the record for today. We're getting into the mid 90s, but our record was 109 degrees, guys. So I guess we have to be a little bit thankful that we're not at record level highs, but it is going to get toasty. So let's send it over to Marcos Guadarrama for a look at your full forecast. Marcos. 
That's right, Sarah. Here's a look at our live shot right now. We are going to be warming up into a little bit above average for today, but those triple digits showing up tomorrow. But let's start a nice calm start to your day. Uh, this is a live shot right now. Downtown Boise feels like 59 out there and looking at some current temperatures across the valley there. Meridian there at 63, Nampa there 63, Caldwell 61. Nice mild 60s for your morning. 57 down Mountain Home, 56 out in Caldwell, and there's a Stanley there at 36 degrees. Now, here's a look at those temperature trends that we just talked about. Mid, uh, about mid 90s for today. Tuesday there, 103 triple digits till Wednesday. We get a little dip there on Thursday, high of 99, still going to be fairly warm, and then back to those triple digits by Friday. So definitely going to be above average for those couple of days. Here's a look at some of our highs for this, uh, this afternoon. 89 there, Idaho City, 93 here in Boise, 95 Emmett, and Mountain Home there at 93. So some nice, uh, mid 90s conditions 97 out there in ontario always that hot spot baker city there 87 and nampa 93 so here's a quick rundown of what to expect warmer today triple digits for by tomorrow a chance of thunderstorms around tuesday wednesday in the southwestern region and but mainly dry and hot conditions so here's a look at that extended forecast warmer today 94 hot by tuesday wednesday folks stay hydrated get that ac working Thursday 98 low in the 60s and back to the triple digits by Friday 99 there on Saturday and 96 on Sunday taking a quick look at that extended mountain forecast 84 on Monday 91 there Tuesday so it is going to be warming warming up a little bit cooling down a bit there upper 80s by Wednesday sunny conditions with a high of 87 and 89 by Friday sunny conditions throughout the weekend so it's going to be warming up and even the mountain region will be warming up as well and as always be sure to turn into our chief meteorologist Roland's forecast today at 4, 5 30, 9, and 10. Sarah? Thank you, Marco. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Hi, Ron. Hi there. Good morning. Uh, not too bad yet on the morning drive. Oh, that sun glare, though, I'll tell you, it can be pretty bad depending on the angle of your drive. Careful, especially if you have a dirty windshield or smudged up sunglasses. Careful. Um, I-84, there's been just a little bit of merge slowing, for example, at Meridian Road. Uh, getting a little more morning volume in some other areas like Highway 2026 at Middleton Road. Still not bad in the construction zone. Highway 44 east of Highway 16 or Highway 44 through Middleton or Star, for that matter. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, families in Uvalde, Texas are continuing to rally after the school shooting at an elementary school there. They want something to be done after what's now been described as a botched police response. Sarah Duran shares their frustrations. And all we did was get lies from the very beginning. Vincent Salazar is demanding change in Uvalde after the mass shooting at Robb Elementary on May 24th. His granddaughter, Layla Salazar, was one of the 21 victims. I'm just asking for people to do their job and to protect these beautiful babies. Salazar blames the officers for their lack of response during the shooting, expressing frustration with school police chief Pete Arredondo, plus the conflicting information about the investigation from state and local leaders since. Him and the other people that were standing in that room for 70 minutes have no business wearing a badge. So he's taking a stand and using his voice for Layla. She is very worth marching for. Marching in the Unheard Voices March and Rally, many of the victims' families participating. The father of victim Jacqueline Casares helped organize it. In a powerful show of solidarity, people are marching from Robb Elementary School to the downtown square for a rally, shouting, no justice, no peace. Amory no Joe Garza's family and others also demanding Arredondo step down from his role with the school district. He stepped down as city councilman in early July. Turn in your badge and resign. Other victim families calling for accountability among city leadership, increased school safety and gun reform. We only ask that they place greater effort in keeping military style weapons from young adults under 21 years That's of age. Not like these families, Salazar could also go on, but hopes this march is another step in creating change in his community. I'm sorry, we can't not have this anymore. 
Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a group of teens to the rescue. How these friends in California helped a family escape a house fire. This is CBS 2 News this morning. Engines revved and taking it to the roads. These bikers headed out on a 55 mile trip to Mountain Home for this year's Idaho Patriot Thunder ride. Now this is the 12th year for Patriot Thunder. It's easily the largest motorcycle ride in the gem state. Now this year it was limited to about 1200 bikes. All the money raised by Patriot Thunder goes right back to two Idaho charities that help military families. One is the Family Support Fund for the Idaho Guard and Reserve. The other is Operation Warm Heart out of Mountain Home Air Force Base. Now twice this spring, the ride did have to be postponed because of rain. Hey, it's just a great day for a ride. It's beautiful. We live in a free country because of our veterans and what they do, our military, and securing our border and our freedom is critical for our country. So I do this every year. If it wasn't for those men and women in the uniform, that we wouldn't be able to do what we do. And God bless them all. Riders, they got a police escort down 84. They ended at Carl Miller Park in Mountain Home. It was a beautiful day for a ride, finally. And before we go, we'd like to share this story with you. A group of teens in California, they jumped into action after a home burst into flames. Marley Ginter shares the daring rescue and how they're now being hailed as heroes. One by one, three teenagers led a family out of a burning home. The little girl, yeah, and then the other kid in the back, that's seven. I think Seven, it was eight. When Jesus, better known as Chewy, to his buddies, saw smoke at a neighbor's house, he ran to make sure everyone was all right. We started, we started banging. We started, we started banging on the doors. We started throwing rocks to the window to see if they wake up. When that wasn't enough, he kicked down the door. I saw a little kid, so I took him to the front. I gave them to someone to carry them, and then I went back. Chewy's sister caught all the chaos on camera. In my voice in the video, you can hear, like, it's already cracking because I wanted to cry. I was just scared. What about you, Pedro? Were you scared? I mean, kind of, but once I seen Chewy come out, I was like, I'm going to just go in there with them. So if anything happens to him, I could get him out. Sounds like you all had each other's backs. Yeah. Basically. They did something really, really amazing. Yeah, way to go, Mom. When you were watching the video, though, did you get a little nervous? I did. I did. I was scared because I'm hearing two sisters, you know, screaming, and I'm like, oh, my God, what's going on? You know, that, that fear of a parent, you know, like you want to protect your children. That instinct clearly passed down to these boys who never hesitated to save complete strangers from a burning house. It's the right thing to do, you know, like, like, it's like basically putting in your shoes. Like if your house is burning, would you like someone to help you or not? Like like that, you know, like I would I would appreciate if someone came and helped me if, if my house is burning down. All right, now to our question of the day. The answer was a UFO. UFO. All right, we'll see you back here at 11. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.